the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. When you're dealing with the spirit, yeah. your love for that individual, for the soul and the spirit of that person pushes you past that abomination. Come on, brother. The point of allowing the spirit within you yes. <clears throat> to reach that person. Yes. That spirit is love. Hmm. And when you allow that to happen, come on now, then that person will change on the inside. Amen. Now, who's to say if they're going to stop doing that act immediately right? or not? We, we that is know. not up to you because everyone yes. is still struggling yeah. with those sins that so easily beset you. Oh. Or the Bible would not say easily beset you. Come on, bro. <laughs> Otherwise, back your word, you said a couple of weeks ago, default. Yeah. Your default is to go against God. Yeah. So there is no man on this earth that is not fully, I mean, that is that is fully sinless. No, that that's a whole thing. In and of themselves. Right. But only through Christ <clears throat> are you counted such. Exactly. So to hold somebody accountable for an act that is unrighteous and that is not according to the standards that God would have you live, and that standard is merely to love God. To love God. And to love others as yourself, yourself that is the standard and you show me someone that's doing that that's completely a, yeah i know it well in what, and of themselves right. because first of all outside of christ it is impossible come on now he said well, to love god with all your heart mind soul body and strength right. it is an impossibility that means if you're doing that tell me what time do you have to sustain yourself your family uh -huh, uh -huh, to, uh -huh. to, to be able to <laughs> to exist in right. this this physical realm you you cannot do that you cannot fulfill that in and of yourself no you can't that that's why you know my fact is there's another group that i was talking listening to uh and and, and i hope i don't draw no fire on it but uh well i guess you it's a, it doesn't matter you, you know, I went to Gino somebody, I think Gino something, Smith or something like that. The, the, you ever seen that guy that talks about other ministries and, 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 and well, don't, don't even worry about it. Because <laughs> he probably talk about you if you say, <laughs> say something. But my point is that they were talking, there were some ministries talking about, uh, we're going to talk about TJ. Uh, they talk about the Catholic, they talk about the Baptist. I mean, the, other, the reason I brought this up, I was doing my workout, and the guy was talking about Baptists. And it said, the, the, the Baptist hijacked John the Baptist title, and, 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 and it ain't nothing but the devil, right? And I was like, that was the first time I heard somebody talk about the Baptist, right? But the person was, the person has a, a his ministry is really talking about those people that's not following from his perspective all the the uh, the things of god uh, and those are like i said those are the ones that he approves yes yes it always boils down to that as soon yes. as you start as soon as you start eliminating folks based on who they are what they are and what they do and how they do it then it always meets a standard that favors you and your lifestyle. Yes. It will never condemn themselves. No. Because they won't be able to put themselves in that position to where they would condemn themselves. No. 
Right. Because they would have to put themselves in a righteous status that is above everyone else. So obviously, they're going to be able to fulfill everything that they're going to to actually condemn. And then, and the, and the problem with that is like that's why I think he, and I, and he does take the uh, the woman called an act of adultery as a prime example of saying, guys, why are you all picking up your rocks? See, right now it may not be a physical rock, but a spiritual rock. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that hurts people, that condemns people. We're condemning there's ministries that, that said you're going to hell. You're going to hell. You you condemn it. You don't have the right to do it, but you do it anyway. You, you're saying that the, you're going to hell because you're not meeting the standards. Uh, or if you talk about these groups of people, and you say they're, they're condemned people already. God hates these people. You, you know mercy, right? There's no mercy in it. You just saying they're God. They're finished with. They're evil people. Opposed to the fact that they're all of us in the eyes of God without Jesus Christ are evil people. And that's why we have a ministry of reconciliation, to bring people to Christ. And then all of us as the body of Christ is to love one another, right? That's what we want to do. But I'm saying this, and I'm putting that scripture back up here. That's where I was sit. I listened to them and I listened to the, the brother that was talking about these other ministries condemning people going to hell. And we, that's not, are we called to do that? No. Uh huh. <laughs> We're not no. called to do that. And here's, here's the one I want to show you. This is what I see sometimes when we, to me, I think when we condemn one another, what we're trying to do is to take the attention off of ourselves, right? And put it on put it on somebody else. In other words, it's better, it's easier for me to, to talk about you, right? So that nobody think about me and my issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think a lot of cases we want to blind ourselves to our own actions by throwing our attention on somebody. In other words, as long as I can get me to look at you, then nobody's looking at me. And I think that's what the problem is. So look at this. Read that scripture for us right there. <laughs> oh, we back to, to Romans 9, 13. Yeah, but that's just the title up there. But go ahead and you go to Luke 6. Okay. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Nope. Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Yes, they will. Disciple, the disciple is not above his master. Nope. But everyone that is perfect uh -huh. shall be as his master. As his master. Love, love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. Come on now, brother. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? Ah, <laughs> why? Perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Come on. Either how canst thou say to thy brother, brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thy eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mold that is in thy brother's eye. Now, now I know that speaks clearly by itself, doesn't it? Yeah. It, 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 it's, it, and I, what I like, I think uh, George Byers did it one time. She said she compared a toothpick, it had a toothpick near her eye, and then she got yeah. a proof stick. And put a broomstick near her eyes. <laughs> and she said, spiritually, this is what it looks like. You're looking at a toothpick in somebody else's eye and criticizing them and what they see. And that's what people see for the church is yep. a big broomstick sticking out of the eye, walking around with a big broomstick and trying to pull a Look, the, uh, I think the analogy of her, her little problem was not only is the fact that the other person got a little toothpick, it's because you got that big stick in front of you, right? You can't even see the toothpick. You can't see it. <laughs> Look, you can't even reach it. Yeah. It's too far. That, 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 that pole that you got or that bead, mm -hmm. I can't. 
Let me, 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 I can't get to it. Yeah. That's what he this is. This is the thing, but, you know, and, and, and this is another thing that we don't see, but it's implied in here. Uh -huh. You pull the beam out of your eye, then you might see that you don't have the ability to pull the splinter out of their eye. Yeah, yeah. You know, you might see clear enough to know that you are not equipped to pull that splinter out of their eye. Come out. Because that splinter may be a different type. Yes. What I've known yeah. and what I've witnessed is that the person who has overcome the sin that besets them. Easily besets them, yep, yeah. Is the person that can deliver the person who's in that same position. Yeah. Because yeah. that person's testimony yes. will touch that person in a way that a person who hasn't been in that position right. can't. Can. Because they can say things that are specific to that person's life and that person's struggle. Yes. And they will know Come on. that that person was right there where they were. Come on. And now they're not. Now they're not. Exactly. That is the pull that you need. That is the testimony. Yeah. You don't really need a testimony of somebody who saw someone else be delivered from that. Come on. Yeah. You need the one who's been delivered from it to give that testimony. Exactly. And in that, there is freedom. Yeah. In that, there is deliverance. Yes. In that, there is a power that is God sent to actually reach into the mind of that person and destroy the yoke that is holding that person down. You know, that, and that's why I was trying to tell the, uh, the brother the other day, is when they were talking about the uh, the the, the Edomites, I was the, you know, the black Hebrew was dealing with that. I understand where they're coming from, but also wanted them to understand that same type of curse and put down they did for the black community for years. You know, the curse of Ham. You yeah. know what I mean? And 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 because of that, they they some people justified the bad things that they did to that group of people, which were us. Or you got people now when they use labels on people and we put them in this, these places we call prisons, which we made as hell on earth. And, and everybody that they can put in there, they want to put them in there, especially of a, you know, different color. And here's the problem. How do you think you can help a person if you base it on the color of their skin. You know, if you if you know, how can you help them if, if you're gonna continue to demonize them just because of the color of their skin? That, you know, in other words, a child born as an African American, or a child born as a white person, or a child born as what they call brown, and you demonize them just for the sole purpose of their color, how can they be redeemed? You can't redeem them, right? Because you put them down. You de I'm saying you demonize them and now you're justifying your bad behavior toward them. Yeah, your criteria isn't righteous. Not at all. Your, 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 even your reaction to them is not righteous. Well, the, 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 the criteria that they're using to react in a, a, a ungodly way. Yeah. Is is ungodly. It's a, that's the whole point, right? You're doing ungodly things. Yet you call them because, ungodly. So how could you redeem somebody by using a quality of an individual that cannot change? Cannot change. And you associate the outward with appearance of a person cannot change. It could be altered, but it cannot change. And for you to use a criteria to treat a person or an individual differently than others that is only based on an outward appearance you are falling so short of the glory of god because it's inward that god looks it exactly 
is inward. You know, I was looking at, even when I was talking, I was looking the other day, even with the, for that, I forget the, about the political perspective of it. The people that went to the Capitol on January the 6th, and, and just last week, I, mean, I don't know if you heard it was that the, the on the Republicans platform, they centered the uh, uh, Cheney and uh, the other congressmen for investigating the, the, the acts on January the 6th. And they, they put in their platform that the people that was participating on January 6th were in a legitimate, le hear the word, legitimate protest. And yet, you know, Cheney, the one in the Congresswoman, mm -hmm. she, 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 this is how she replied. She texts the picture of the behavior, a small clip of what the, the, the uh, people at the Capitol did. You know, how mm -hmm. they were beating people, you know, police and dicks yeah. and stuff. She's just saying is that, and now you get a whole bunch of reaction across the board now from some of the Republicans who's saying is the ones who, who are on the side of saying, look, it is crazy for a political party to legitimize bad behavior. Well, they have to. And no, <laughs> they've tied themselves to that. Yeah. And they have to change that narrative. And so before these elections come, they have to, they have to sever that connection to these two individuals. Yeah. Because these two individuals are a part of their number. So they cannot, it's like I said, yeah. you can only look down upon and criticize somebody that does not meet the criteria that you have for yourself. Woo. And if that person that was with you does not agree with that criteria anymore, then you have to sever yourself from them for your criteria to have anything to stand on. And that, and to say, right, in other words, you're talking about you trying to legitimize a bad behavior, right? Are you trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. And, they're, and, they're trying to, they're trying to change a narrative. Uh -huh. And if everybody doesn't agree to the narrative that they're trying to change, then that leaves it to be questioned. And so for them to be able to switch that narrative to for people to believe something different than what they saw, yeah, they got to have everybody on one accord so that everyone keeps saying the same unbelief. How can, <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's, that's what called blind leading the blind again, because my point is that you see it and you can't change the narrative of it. You really, it's, it's, it's no more different than, than, than Christ telling everybody, he who I've seen, let him cast the first stone. What you're seeing before you is sin at its worst. <laughs> and, and you're trying to put a, what you trying to, what you trying to put, perfume on it? It's it's just the it's, bottom line is it's just it's confusion, it is deceitful, it is uh, bait and switch, it's is it's everything that you can see of that's not righteous. Now uh, I'm I'm not one to get into politics anymore. I'm I'm so no, done with it. I am so done with it. Don't focus but, on politics. Focus on the behavior right now. I'm just okay, talking about I don't even want to use it as a... We, there is so...